NATO's leaders met in Madrid at the end of June for a historic summit at a challenging time for European security when NATO is facing a challenge it has never faced before in the history of the Alliance, a land war in the European continent. The summit had two main objectives. The first objective was to respond to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and support Ukraine and reset NATO's defence and deterrence posture. In the presence of President Zelensky, NATO allies agreed to continue their strong assistance to Ukraine through providing further military assistance and also committing to the long-term reconstruction of Ukraine after the war. On NATO's reset of its defence and deterrence posture, allies agreed three things. Firstly, to deploy more combat forces to the east of the Alliance. That would include increasing the current multinational battle groups to brigade size formations. Secondly, increasing the pool of deployable forces from 40,000 to 300,000 high readiness forces. Third, Allies agreed to pre-position equipment, supplies and facilities in Eastern Europe to enhance the reinforcement of NATO forces, making that easier and more powerful and more of a deterrent to Russia. NATO leaders also adopted a new strategic concept, which is a key document defining NATO's missions and priorities for the years ahead. The contrast between the previous strategic concept of 2010 and the new one is striking. 12 years ago, Allies hoped to build a partnership with Russia and did not even mention China. In the new concept, Allies describe Russia as the most direct and significant threat to NATO's security and also describes China as posing systemic challenges to the security, value and interest of the Alliance. In response, the concept puts NATO's collective defense mission front and center. Allies notably agree to significantly strengthen their military posture to deny any potential aggression from Russia. Allies have also committed to strengthen their resilience to answer the systemic challenges posed by China, from its cyber operations to disinformation campaigns, but also its control of key technologies. Taken together, these measures represent, in the words of the Secretary General, the biggest overhaul of NATO's defence and deterrence in a generation. But for NATO, the work is just starting. Allies now need to agree who will provide the forces to meet this new level of ambition. For more information and analysis on NATO and European security, please visit csas.org Europe.